Welcome traders to another crypto market update. In this video, we're going to be going over the central bank digital dollar and be going to go over some of the uh, key people in the cryptocurrency space and what their thoughts are on the central bank digital currencies. Uh, and then we'll go over some of the charts we're going to get into. We're going to go over BTC and that uh, larger ascending wedge that still has not broken out. And then we'll go over some of the alts as well. But uh, since yesterday, there hasn't been that much movement. XRP did push the upside. BNB did push to the upside as well. But um, we'll get into that as uh, the video goes on. But first, let's talk about this uh, article that we just pulled up right here. Heads of Binance, US, Ledger, and Zcoin speak to impact the digital dollar on industry or speak to impact of the digital dollar on the industry. Uh, so if you don't know, the US uh, Federal Reserve uh, put in a bill that they are thinking about potentially implementing a digital dollar and then they took it out uh, soon after. But the fact that they're trying to pass a bill and there's already individuals uh, within the, the political space that are trying to push past this US digital dollar. So it could get implemented. So we're going to dive in to see what some of the key people are discussing and thinking about about this particular topic. So let's dive into the uh, article right here. COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on the global economy as legislators in the United States go back and forth on how to best distribute aid. The conversation has amplified the potential role of a digital dollar to avoid the traps of traditional finance. So they're already saying that traditional finance is too slow. It's too sluggish. It's too expensive. It's not able to provide the necessary services that uh, the government is trying to to look for right now. So whether or not ongoing stimulus efforts lead to the minting of the digital dollar, it's a subject that is on the minds of US legislators in a new way, especially as China's pending central bank digital currency or CBDC continues moving forward. And we talked about that a few days ago in a previous crypto market update. Cointelegraph spoke with several leaders in the blockchain industry to get their take on what a digital dollar means for stimulus, government, and crypto. So this is very important, not even if you're not in crypto, this is still very important to understand. And um, I think you got to have an opinion with this. It's not something that you should take uh, just uh, to put it in the back of your mind, really think about what this means, and if you would be using a central bank digital currency. So let's dive in. A boost for crypto or just buzzwords? Uh, I think I don't know really how to uh, say his last name, but uh, Pascal Gauthier, Gauthier, a CEO of crypto hard, uh, hard wallets maker Ledger, was positive about the prospect of a digital dollar for the company. Even so, he was uncertain as to whether recent legislation would actually bring it into existence. It's amazing news. Garth Garthier told Cointelegraph on what a digital dollar would mean for Ledger, not the cryptocurrency market, but for Ledger. We're a fintech company. We're just a tech company. We provide security solutions for critical, for critical digital assets and, you know, blockchain enabled assets. So everything that runs on the blockchain is good for us because we protect the secrets. We protect the private everything that runs on the pub on a public blockchain. So. Uh, for Ledger, yeah, that's great because that's just another digital asset that they're able to store safely. And that's a huge positive impact for a company like Ledger because they're a very reputable, well-known uh, hardware wallet that is going to be, you know, one of the top three wallets that people turn to if the entire market does start to shift into a more digital backed currency or digital currency. So uh, makes sense that it's great for them. Uh, CEO of Binance, uh, actually it's CZ who's a CEO, but uh, Catherine Cosley, I, I believe some maybe national CEO, like uh, maybe American, I, I don't exactly know, but I know CZ is a true CEO, but let's dive into what uh, Catherine Cosley has to say. Uh, she says that if it is a push towards efforts of the Fed coming forward with their new or their own version of a central bank coin, that would be something that would be fascinating and a good move in the direction of leading the US. Like Gauthier 
coolly couched her optimism. In terms of how that actually affects the adoption rate or the financial inclusion that we see as benefiting from digital assets, it's a little bit different. So I do agree, let's read on. Part of the problem with the digital dollar as proposed in some of the versions of the currently circulating stimulus bill is that it would operate strictly via the current financial system monitoring by the Federal Reserve. And then Gothier illustrated that major difference in the way that Bitcoin's network security grew and how hypothetical blockchain-based dollar would develop. So basically the first section here, um, the Federal Reserve is going to be monitoring everything if we're going to be accepting of this new digital dollar. Literally everything, every transaction, uh, they're going to know everything about you and already looking at things like Facebook, Google, Think of how much data is already placed upon you and is already tracking you. And then if we do implement a central bank digital currency, they will know every single transaction that you make. They will control um, your entire life. If you do something negative, they could completely wipe you out financially. They have the power to do that. And that's a lot of power given to the government. So um, also now going into it, they, they haven't had any true experience with building blockchains, with being able to uh, successfully complete an infrastructure that's able to provide a network of, uh, you know, computing power and a network of uh, individuals that's able to provide uh, transactions uh, of assets from one individual to another in a peer to peer system. They have no real experience with that, the Fed, right? Uh, they're, you know, in historic times, yes, they're trying to catch up with blockchain, but in terms of the cutting edge leading tech companies, they're very far behind. And this is what she has to say. Uh, what's going to be interesting with the crypto dollar is more of a top down experience. Suddenly, you have trillions of assets that are in crypto. Security will be paramount from day one. And so the type of infrastructure that you need to implement from day one to support that is going to be a challenge for sure. Completely. And we'll discuss how Bitcoin came into be. Uh, we see the quote from Gothier. Gothier, I think. Uh, the infrastructure question in general for crypto assets is a very interesting one. If you see the evolution of Bitcoin, Bitcoin is two th in Bitcoin in 2008 is one guy and then two guys and three guys, etc. So it went from a very, very small group of individuals and slowly grew over time in a span of a decade and a little bit, right? Uh, so in this different circumstance, uh, so you got a concentric circles, more people joining every year, right? That's the the proper way to grow in some sense because then you're not just completely overloading a brand new system with you know 300 million people it, it's a slow progression of growing uh, over time which is a healthier way to grow and there's less issues that come with it um, and then it says right here this digital dollar idea seems to be a knee-jerk response uh, the allure is simple uh, to have direct access to citizens with minimum red tape and the ability to directly provide dollars to the people, including the unbanked. So that's their plan. And right now, the current financial system is unable to provide that. And that's why they're looking to uh, implement these blockchain technologies to try to create more efficiency within their systems. All right. Let's now go to the next... Uh, Topic here is this even blockchain given the limited specifications as to any protective digital dollar coming out of or projective digital dollar coming out of the stimulus package nobody was confident that the final product would properly fall into the category of blockchain based cryptocurrency yap was adamant creation of the digital dollar is not an endorsement of cryptocurrency or bitcoin or even blockchain I do agree to some, I do agree to some level. I think a, a large part of cryptocurrencies is the privacy, is the ability to be your own bank, is the ability to be independent, to not have a third party. And that's exactly what the uh, central bank digital currencies are not. They're private. They're probably going to be on a private ledger where only the government and the central banks are able to see the transactions. Uh, they're not going to be decentralized. It's going to be completely centralized just by the central banks. Um, and you're not going to be your own bank. The, the central bank is going to be providing the coins, is going to be providing the ledger entries and everything. So you have no real control. Um, so it's going to be a big divide verse being your own bank, being in, independent, using a decentralized network, um, you know, for currency like Dash or Monero. Uh, those are more privacy uh, oriented coins. 
where as if you are looking to use the Fed's currency, everything will be tracked. So there's a big divide, divide here that's currently uh, going to be have to be made by uh, humanity as a decision, either to go for central bank currency or decentralized currency. So let's continue on here. This issue with CBDCs and privacy. Many of the crypto communities are suspicious of CBDCs uh, at large, basically seeing them as means for government to monitor private transactions. This is a large part of the conversation surrounding China's proposed digital uh, renminbi. But given spectacles, Skepticism towards the Federal Reserve among fans of Bitcoin, it's easy to see why the proposed Fed accounts might not be cause for celebration. We need to consider the implications of privacy as well as these wallets will be tied to an identity. The digital dollar could also become a gateway of the removal of physical cash, which is still currently the most private way to perform financial transactions. So privacy is is very, very important for this particular topic that will be important in the next uh, you know handful of years because there's a huge shift and a huge monetary shift that's currently playing out in front of our eyes and uh, we already talked about the help we, we talked about how the Fed doesn't really have much uh, experience with it so we already saw in March 16th we talked about this uh, kind of you know maybe a handful of days ago uh, we see Brian Brooks from Coinbase. He was the former chief legal officer at Coinbase, and he has been tapped as a chief operational officer and first deputy comptroller of the office of the comptroller of the currency beginning April 1st, 2020. So he went from Coinbase, which is arguably the largest exchange in the United States. I'd say Binance is the largest exchange in the world in terms of the ability to trade, but Coinbase is massive. It's the largest exchange in the United States, I'm pretty sure. And the chief legal officer from Coinbase moved to this new government role. Uh, in this role, Brooks will be helping the OCC and its mission of chartering, regulating, supervising national banks and federal savings associations, along with federal branches and agencies of foreign banks. So we're seeing a movement f uh, of executives from these private blockchain leading tech corporations into the government space. What does that mean? Well, the government is interested in finding people who have expertise within this field, as well as being able to actually start to implement this technology within their systems. So the shift is happening. When, when you see the governments acting on this blockchain, you know that this technology is going to be disrupting the world. Um, very, very interesting, very, very fascinating stuff for the news stories, in my opinion, for today. So uh, now we're going to go into the charts, going over Bitcoin and then going over the different alts soon after. Quickly just looking at uh, the comments to see if there's any. I don't think so. So now we're going to go into the price of BTC. All right, let's dive right into it. So since yesterday, let's just zoom out a little bit. I don't think we're really going to be going into too much of uh, a larger time frame uh view because we've already been talking about this move for who knows how long for for days and days and days so don't know the larger time frame take the previous video watch it and then you'll know exactly what we're talking about so we are right at our support zone right here we haven't broken it yet but we see that we got one two three four so the 6800 pretty strong level of resistance but we're still within our major structural zone we see a resistance right here at that 6800 and then we see a long-term ascending level of support right here and the apex is going to be right here so as of right now there's still a possibility of the price to hold this level of support come back and test this zone so my personal view having a short is a little bit premature right now what we're waiting for is a break in this ascending level of support uh, that is the first thing that we're looking for uh, second thing we're looking for, if it does squeeze, because we see a little squeeze right here as well with a resistance and an ascending support. So we're getting a squeeze right now. It's just a matter of if we're going to move to the upside or downside. But if we move to the upside, well, then we've got our resistance right here. And then we'll basically be playing 
around here for a possible entry because we have the close to the resistance we have the previous support acting as a new level of resistance as well so that would be a pretty high level confluence zone stop loss would just be above the pre previous high if it does move towards upside basically all the shorts are going to get out because from this point all these points there's a lot of short sellers probably entering the market and if it does break above here we've broken the market structure higher high uh, so then the market structure would shift to the upside and a lot of short sellers would get out a lot of buyers and FOMO entries to the upside would come in as well aggressively pushing the price up so we want to wait but um, that's going to be the opportunity if it does break to the upside we're just going to keep on being patient and wait for that push to the downside now if the pr price does break this ascending support and push to the downside we also have a horizontal level of support right around here it's been respected since the 24th of March Ha the price hasn't dropped below that zone. Uh, we see wicks to the downside. We see long wicks, long wicks, long wicks, long wicks, but we're not seeing a candle closure below the zone. So talking about market structure, this is the current market structure zone. So right now, the way I see the market is this is going to be the, oops, this is going to be the potential volume distribution area. Because remember, we have volume distribution which is at the top consolidations and then we have volume accumulation which is on the bottom and then we're going to have another potential move to the upside so right now in my view we are currently seeing a volume distribution phase we don't see that much sell pressure but what i notice within the uh, consolidation that gave me a lot of indications of sell pressure is this rejection right here the bulls tried to push the price up it went above this high it went above the previous two highs so it made a new structural higher high on the smaller time frames but soon after it got absolutely demolished and there's a lot of sell pressure that came in a lot more sell pressure than buy pressure so that shows me that there's volume distribution within the market and then we got another attempt right here to push the price up above the zone and then instantly it got rejected back down no pullback no hesitation a lot of pressure from the sell uh, from the sell side with a bearish engulf in canada to close it off initiating that downtrend so uh in my view there's definitely a lot of pressure within this area the 6800 dollars zone but like we said uh we're wanting to wait until that price breaks that squeeze now if it does break this zone, we're looking for a lower low to come in. We do see three zones that we could uh, be playing with, with within the range, 64, 66, and 6,800. Uh, they're decently wide from each other, so we want to give room, but at the end of the day, we still want to be able to manage risk. But um, I think this is going to be a pretty big move, so I don't mind giving a little bit more room than, I guess, what you call the average trade. But the main horizontal level that I want to see break in order for me to call it a lower low and a initiation of the downtrend would be the 66 ish hundred dollar level of support once that breaks and we see some one hour time frame lower lows come in and hold and if we see a lower high that for me is a huge confirmation that we could get another push to the downside now they pull back now let's say we actually get this and the price comes boom down there and we make a lower low now we're looking for the lower high because the market moves in cycles it moves in lower low and lower high formations we're looking to have an entry on the lower high that could either be at the pullback of the sixty six hundred dollar level of previous support new level of resistance that is a good probability situation to enter we will want to see price action confirmation giving indications of sellers within the market before we look to enter double bottoms bearish engulfing candles long looks to the upside with candle closures below the open of the candle we're looking for indications of sell pressure right so that's going to be the first major retest that we're going to be looking for probably the the highest probability out of all the trades that uh are going to be presented in this uh, potential opportunity right around here the second pullback is if we get a push to the downside breaking our horizontal level of support and then we get a pullback validating not only the horizontal level of resistance and support right around here but also this long-term ascending level of support so we get a push to the downside yes we could come down here and then pu pull back or we could pull back to the previous support at around 66 and then dump down or we could come back all the way up to the ascending support right here as well as a mid-range zone we can see within the volume distribution consolidation area right there so uh, we got a couple options for the pullback we will want to see the price actually hesitate before we look to enter to the downside we don't want to enter on the first wick that we see there we want to see hesitation we want to see rejection so uh, that is going to be 
the opportunities. It, I'm looking for the pullback at the end of the day. And then after that, uh, basically, we're going to be looking for a stop loss above this zone. And then for take profits, looking at the four hour, we can see that uh, the 5k zone, in my opinion, is a really good area for a potential take profit because looking on the daily, we can see it's a zone of confluence horizontally as well as with a descending level of uh, support. So that's a good opportunity. And then we could see some exaggeration and uh, overextensions with the wicks to the downside, holding with the candles at this 5k level of support. So uh, being smart in using OC orders with the extensions may not be a bad idea. Uh, for if, if it does aggressively aggressive move to the downside, we do see a strong level of support at around 4200 with the previous structure back in 2018-2019 of the resistance there before we massively broke to the upside. So that's going to be a strong level of support as well. So we could, uh, when we see, or if we see a dump to the downside, some wicks uh, hit that zone with the candle bodies close at around maybe 46, 47. So that's going to be my view of the market is it's going to come back down and test these lows. I don't think it's just going to bounce and continue upwards. I think we will have a test of these lows. It's just a matter of if we're going to hold this 5k zone or $4,800 zone or push down below breaking the lower low structure. And that would kind of be another capitulation phase that uh, the market may see. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm expecting at least a move back down to 5k and that's going to be my long-term outlook for BTC. Well, like swing trade outlook. Obviously, if you're talking about monthly and weekly charts, that's a completely different story. But, um, you know, the four hour looks good. We're looking on the smaller time frames, and we're looking for a good entry and we'll talk about uh, the entry within the Performante Premium uh, students. But at the end of the day, we have not broken the zone yet. So I'm not looking to enter just quite yet. But um, we're really looking to try to capture some potential to the downside here very shortly. Now to go on to the supply and demand here on Bitfinex. This is the margin trades that are opened on long and shorts. So we see on the top here, this is going to be the positions that are opened long on margin on Bitfinex. And we see that it's dropping. There's less and less people opening up long positions on, on Bitfinex using margin. And we see a decrease in sell pressure too. So there's not a whole lot of activity both to the buy side and sell side, they're both losing interest. And it's kind of a point where we're consolidating sideways for a few days. No one really sees the momentum going either way. So in my opinion, we're just going to wait for a particular aggressive move. And then the market will react. The sellers will get out. The buyers or sorry, the sellers will attack and the buyers will get out uh, if it's a short move to the downside. And then, you know, short sellers will come in and, and attack the price. And um, we already talked about the hash rate that is in confluence with our longer term bias, um, which if you don't know, check out the previous video. We talk about hash rate and how that is giving us another indication of a potential move to the downside, looking at the mining capitulation cycle that we see. So that is the uh, analysis for the buyers and sellers. Not a huge amount of activity, not a huge amount of interest in both the buyers and sellers, although we did get a pretty sharp spike in the sellers. So there's... Uh, there's quick to have sell pressure if we get some momentum to the downside, it looks like, uh, whereas the buyers just seem like they're just losing all interest, it seems. So that's the analysis for BTC. Uh, we're now going to go into the altcoins here, going to go over Ethereum, Ripple, Link, BNB, and EOS. Yep, made sure those were all right. Let's quickly look at the 15 here. Really, really testing that area of support. Not able to break it just yet, but it's looking very, very close for a solid entry. And uh, we would be risking quite a substantial amount. Like, it doesn't seem like a lot, but like, f you know, 4%, 5%. But if your take profits are 12%, 20%, those are some phenomenal risk reward parameters. And that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for a small 5% move. Uh, for take profit, we're looking for double digits here. So now let's go on to XRP. All right, so this is another wedge that we have within the altcoins here. Uh, we do see XRP pumped and held the higher high here, not much of a higher high, but it did hold a higher high and broke the 1631-ish cent level of resistance. So um, it is at a current level of resistance right now, but it's not really close to the ascending level of support that's created by the ascending wedge. So 
You could use the ascending resistance of the wedge as a resistance to risk off of, and then you're trying to enter at the top of the wedge instead of a breakout breaking the support of the wedge. That's an option, and this is what XRP is able to provide right now. Let's dive in. So instead of breaking it out at the breakout point, like we can see right here, we're trying to potentially capture, if you're looking for a short, the top of this zone. So you're able to capture not only the move of the breakout, but also within the wedge as well. But right now, there's not a whole lot of opportunity in my personal view. You could draw a trend line that's connecting the higher, low, higher lows like so. But uh, I'm not going to dive into too much of the smaller time frames because I want to step back. There's a lot of noise and I only want to be looking at the larger term uh, structure of the market. Uh, I don't think this is a fully created pattern yet. I think if we're able to maybe create some level of an ascending wedge like this. Uh, that would give me a better, better edge and a better squeeze. If it does dump, I'd get a better edge and a better trade and a better entry on this particular pair. So um, I don't really see anything too much of XRP right now that I'd want to do. Uh, you know, just some simple TA. We see a nice little minor level of support right around here. And we're just seeing a consolidation above the previous high. And larger term time frame, we see a nice ascending wedge. And we're at the top of the ascending resistance zone of the wedge. And we're just consolidating. We could see a nice price action pattern. Uh, you know, if you were really, really looking at try to trade this simply, you just look to try to enter short near the high of the resistance. You put your stop loss above the zone. Let's say it's 2.7. And then just to the breakout zone of the ascending wedge, you're looking at a three risk reward. And then you got that entire push to the downside if it does break that ascending wedge. So um, that is a opportunity if you are looking for it. I think I'm gonna be sticking more just with Bitcoin. Um, because of just the level of uncertainty with how Bitcoin has been moving. Um, it's in just a, such a tight consolidation right now and I want to see momentum. And once I do see momentum, then these alts will look really, really appealing to me because we have a confirmation that sellers are in the market. But right now, uh, we're not really seeing that. So I'm not going to be particularly looking to try to enter uh, as fast as I can. I'll be patient sitting on my ass and um, seeing trying to understand where the market's going and trying to read its story basically. So let's go on to another chart. That's my analysis for XRP. Could enter at the highs here with a uh, stop loss above. And then, like I said, three to one risk reward just to the 16.33 zone. And then if it does break below, you're looking at great, great risk rewards. Mind you, my bias is going to be short because my bias for BTC is going to be short. Not just because of the um, technicals, but also the hash rate, also the fundamentals in the global macro space. Um, you know, like if you just lost your job, just lost thirty percent on your four hundred one k or savings, are you going? Are like, are you going to be like, oh my god, there's so much inflation? No, like people aren't seeing the inflation yet. Um, People are not going to be going to Bitcoin unless they start seeing inflation, in my opinion. There's going to be more deflationary pushes to the downside for Bitcoin, in my personal opinion, before we get the true bull run that we are expecting. This is sellers taking profits, FOMO people. This is just emotional trading with lots of volatility. And I think that um, we will get another leg to the downside, unfortunately, for my long-term investments. But for my short-term trading, I don't mind because it's providing, these shorts are providing some lucrative opportunities. Uh, so now let's go to Ethereum. Oops. All right, so this trade, this trend line is not super valid at this point. I'm not even going to incorporate that. Um, on the four hour, we see two trend lines, not super, super valid um, in terms of both of them. Let's just get our snip and talk about the four hour chart. Just talking about the structure of the market. So we see a strong level of resistance at around 145 ish, uh, well respected. And then we see a high lower high and a lower high not significant but still we're, we're getting a weakening from the buyers and we see a nice level of support hold and that's going to be the market structure support and then we got two ascending zones right here uh, not super respected we see there's a lot of mess right here but we see respected right one two three four right so that zone is a pretty well respected zone that's going to be the confirmation of the break basically 
in confluence with the horizontal zone. So once this trend line breaks and this horizontal zone breaks, that's going to be my confirmation that, yeah, the price is probably going to dump back at least to form a potential double bottom somewhere around here. If not, maybe make a wick to around $84, $85 yet again, maybe. So um, that's going to be the outlook for Ethereum. And then we got another trend line that we already broke, which is going to be this zone, anchor point at the very, very bottom. And we only really have one real interaction of that zone and then another interaction of that zone. And then we just broke that area for it was a support and then it broke and then now we're testing it for a resistance we can see within that zone right there so we'll uh see how the price goes i'm going to be a little bit more conservative and wait until the market structure breaks of this level of support as well as the more conservative ascending zone that we see right here connecting one two three four zones so that's going to be ethereum's entry for me and then stop loss will be above this high this high somewhere around there and then take profit probably around here. And then you could maybe get some OCO orders near the sub hundred dollar level, which would be a really good risk reward. That's going to be the trade for Ethereum. Going to stay patient on this and just stick on the larger time frames. Link is the next trade that we're going to be looking at here. Let's go to the four hour and then zoom in a little bit more. I'll take this out. We don't really need that. And I think that's going to be the end of it. Do I need that? Yeah, I don't need that. Let's take that out. Okay, so we got a couple couple zones here, but at the end of the day, we're looking for one major zone, which is around a dollar fifty-five to a dollar sixty. Um, so yet again, we got a squeeze. We got a resistance zone right here and an ascending level of support, and we're currently seeing the price hold our support pretty well on the one hour. This is a nice candle closure zone, so it's a valid zone. But on the four hour, it's just kind of randomly in the middle of the wick. But on the one hour, it's a nice candle closure. And then we see our anchor point. We see our first touch. We see our nice second touch right here. And then we see our third touch. So it's four touches, making it a dependable zone. And we're also seeing an anchor point, uh, our first lower high, second lower high, third lower high, or at least holding a horizontal level of resistance. So we're basically in a nice tight squeeze for Link here. And we're just waiting for some failure in weakness from the buyers before we look to short. So link is a good opportunity. Um, I like the fact that we have a descending zone right here connecting the lower highs. This is giving me more confidence and a easier risk level for me to understand where to put. So for example, if I'm entering at these levels here, it's easy to see that I have a very key level of resistance at around $2 and 20 cents. So I could put my stop loss at maybe $2 and 30 or $2 and 40 cents. Um, depending on what my risk and reward parameters are, but mainly uh, the main stop loss is going to be up here, and then the take profit is going to be around a dollar sixty, dollar fifty five is going to be my ideal round take profit right here because that was a key level of support back in the start of March, and also back in the historic time frames, it's a very strong level of support and resistance as well. So that's going to be the link trade. Uh, basically, we're really going to be only looking for shorts. We're not really going to be looking for longs at this very moment, and looking on the one hour. Yep, very well respected all throughout. Pretty similar pattern to BTC. And uh, hopefully this is going to give us some great opportunities here. Um, looking at, you know, in terms of position size and all that, uh, let's say your risk was like at 10%. Uh, your reward is going to be around, let's say, 27 or 30%. So then your risk reward is, let's say, 2.7 or 3 to 1, which in my opinion is a pretty damn good risk reward and is a pretty high probability situation that we're gonna be looking for. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. We will always let the Performante Premium members know before we look to enter this, but uh, Link is looking pretty good, pretty favorable. Um, in my opinion, much better than XRP and better than Ethereum. Ethereum is better than XRP, but Link is better than both of them in terms of the structure of the market and the um, overall price action pattern that we're trading, in my personal opinion. All right, BNB is going to be the next trade that we're going to be looking for. It's kind of similar to Ethereum with our kind of two trend lines that we're seeing. Um, I, can't, I can't really get a pinpoint on one single well-respected trend line on these two. So I 
incorporated two instead. Uh, the first one we see is gonna be the more aggressive one. We see an anchor point right here. And then we only really see one and then two touches. So we have three touches in total, including the anchor point, which is somewhat of a valid zone. Um, and then we see it get respected right now. And if it breaks, that's gonna be some level of a confidence for me that's gonna come to the downside. But the more conservative approach and the more conservative ascending trend line is gonna be this one right here. We have candle closures uh, with type B, then you have type A's, and then you have candle closures type B, and then you have type C's, and you have type A's. Just pretty well-respected zone all throughout this area right here. And then you have a perfect type A wick touch, perfect I type A wick touch, and then that's gonna be your final zone of support before we're getting a potential move to the downside. And then we also have a mid-range zone, which is around right here, which is around $11, which is also going to act as a pretty important key zone. But I think the point where we would be looking to short would be the break of this mid-range zone right here at $12 in confluence with our more conservative ascending level of support. Uh, once that is fulfilled, we'll look for our three things. What are we looking for? Price action, which would be the break of the ascending triangle, the market structure, looking to make a series of uh, lower low and lower high formations, and also volume spread analysis, VSA, which is going to be looking at the volume, trying to create a story, looking at the supply and de demand uh, given by the data we have right here. Right, so that's gonna be the approach that we're gonna be taking as well as looking at confluences from BTC. So on Binance, we don't really have anything right now. We see a nice level of support that we're currently holding right here. If it breaks, we're gonna be looking for more of a short opportunity, but at the end of the day, we're looking for that confluence that we talked about with the more, more conservative ascending trend line and the horizontal zone for BNB. But I do think that link is a better opportunity compared to BNB for a short opportunity, um, although, Let's look at EOS before making any other choices. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. Nice one hour candle closure for the uh, anchor point. Let's go to the four hour and discuss this uh, zone here. All right, so it's less respected in my opinion than some of the other charts that we're looking at. But also, we also um, have the fact that this is pretty far away from the candle. Uh, the, the current price is pretty far away from the ascending support. This is different from what we see at Link. Link is basically right at that zone. So it won't take a lot of distance for Link to break the ascending level of support. Whereas EOS will take a significant amount still in order for the price to even test our ascending support. And if it's a matter of if we're gonna break it or not. So for any latecomers, for anyone who might be late to the game in trading who might have met who's might going who may miss the setup for a short opportunity this is what we call a sympathy play eos is lagging behind some of the other alts which is going to provide a potential opportunity if we don't get an entry on let's say for example link or uh, for example bitcoin let's say we're sleeping let's say we're doing something like life gets in the way sometimes you can't be looking at a chart for 24 hours a day um, this is going to be an opportunity for a sympathy play because let's say Bitcoin drops and we've already passed the point where we want to enter. EOS is lagging behind. So where Bitcoin's already fell too far, Ethereum might just be where we're looking to take it. So it's good to have these opportunities that are going to be creating sympathy plays for us. You can also have front runners, which are going to be creating uh, breaks before the... Uh, major asset, like let's say, for example, silver breaks before gold, that's a front running of the, the God asset. And then let's say, for example, EOS broke before BTC, that would be front running the God asset of the crypto market, which would be Bitcoin. And that's how you would play either front running assets or front running uh, trades, or you'd be playing sympathy plays, which would be lagging behind. So that's how you have the two situations when you're trading different assets within the same asset class. Uh, so that's going to be EOS's opportunity. Uh, basically, you know how it is. We've got an ascending zone, ascending zone, creating an ascending wedge. This is a nice potential bearish pattern. We're going to be looking for the pullback around these zones. Uh, very well-respected 
mid-range zone we have on EOS right here, previous level of resistance, new level of support. We're most likely going to have some level of a test at this zone because we see it's a strong zone of sensitivity throughout the chart. So we're going to be looking for that. I think if we do get a push to the downside, we will see some prime opportunities once we see that $2.20 range hold. But we won't want to see one validation of a new level of support. We'll probably want to see minimum of two, if not three validations of a level of support. And then we'll be able to potentially have an ascending zone. And that would be a really good pattern that we'd be able to see. But we first want to see one, two, and ideally three touches of that zone getting rejected before we look to really, really enter and use that zone as a significant area. So that is the uh, crypto market update for today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we will go over the TikTok video uh, comments, the TikTok comments and the uh, YouTube comments. But uh, for the recording, that's going to be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you found this useful, if you found this entertaining, if you found this valuable, definitely please subscribe. That helps us out tremendously. And uh, we hope that you have a fantastic day and you have a great uh, end of the week trading. And hopefully we will see you and you'll be tuning in to next week's uh, crypto market update every single day. Uh, we won't be doing it on uh, Saturdays, but on Sundays we'll do a weekly wind up. Our wind up so we'll talk about the potential opportunities we'll see for the upcoming week looking at mainly the larger time frames and then throughout the week we'll be talking about mainly the one hour and smaller time frames because uh, we can possibly look for potential uh, day trades or even short-term swing trades but that's the goal for us and we hope that you're able to gain something from it so thank you very much for watching and until next time happy trading